So, as you can see from the first, uh, the title slide, uh, there is already a result of uh, what we can get from our data. It's a graph and I will come to that later on. But uh, first I would like to say that today we have also some participants uh, from the project, uh, young scientists for Europe, for Central Europe, <laughs> which is supported by the Visegrad Fund. And so we are happy that uh, uh, some teachers or uh, participants of this project also joined our webinar, uh, as they will also do some phenology observations, as I understood. So let's see what we will do today. Uh, we will go through the visualization system. Uh, I also want to tell you about some changes that we expect in data entry. The changes will happen uh, since uh, next year. And I got a presentation from Technology Working Group of the GLOW program uh, so that uh, you can already preview some of the changes. Um, then I would like to give uh, more uh, room to you so that you can ask questions. Uh, so that I can help you with some troubles that you may have. And um, I have also on the presentation that I will be showing that there are also slides that show the data entry step by step. But uh, I don't think there will be need for that today, unless majority of you, you want to see it really step by step. You will get the presentation after the webinar so you can actually follow the presentation and try it yourself if when you will have uh, your own data and you will try to, to uh, enter them to the system. So that's, that's it and let's start with the visualization system. So what I showed uh, on, the, on the title of the presentation was a graph like this and um, how you can see that this is from Ukraine and this is actually what you can see in the visualization system. Uh, this is the detail of that graph where you can now clearly see the dates. This is uh, actually from last year. You can see that they have very nice uh, uh, records that they measure the uh, color of the tree of the leaf very uh, often and that's why they have uh, these records which are very uh, how to say it, very common and uh, this is uh, how it looks when you enter the system uh, for that you don't need to be signed in you can normally uh, open the page of the visualization system and start to work with that so if you want to Hmm. If you want to practice, you can go there and try it on your own. So I will first go through the slides and then we can have a look on the visualization system itself. So this is, uh, this, uh, this is the same graph, which is enlarged. We, it's uh, very useful to have it enlarged because then you can download it or you can print it or you can uh, share the link exactly to this graph. So if you, for example, want to share it with your students, you can share it to them by email or some uh, web page you have or social media. Or you can make a print screen and, and then you, you can download it. Um, I hope that most of you, you already know how to get to the visualization tool. If not, then uh, the fastest way is that uh, if you are signing to GlobeGov, you go to your school page and from school page, uh, when you scroll to the bottom of your school page, you will see this school data, data sites. Okay. This school data sites or most recent measurements. And in that you have the site name. Here you can see just some numbers and, um, uh, and letters. But for example, here the site has already name. It's up to you how you label your, your site site is the place where you do the measurements. So for example, your tree is the site. Uh, the other option how to get there is through the uh, phenology campaign uh, website where you have the tab called our measurements. And uh, 
the link will also take you to the visualization system. Okay, and this is already that we are in there. So, actually, I don't know if you can see the presentation as a whole or you see, is, is the right side of the presentation covered or not? I think it should be visible for you now also. So, this visible. is the, yeah, thank you. I'm always confused if you can see the same as I can see or if you see it in a different way. So this is one of the details. Here you can see the even like more colors that we could see on that uh, graph that was from Ukraine. This one is from Poland. And uh, as you can see on the, on the left, uh, we get these graphs uh, if we choose green down layer. It's called protocol layers and it's called green down. So the observations that we do in autumn in, a, in globe, it's called green down. And here we have filter according, uh, we can filter according to the three species. These several um, three species we have in the campaign, which you can see here, Old Beach and so on. So you can filter if you are, are interested in particular um, three species. For example, you also observe birch. You can, uh, you can filter from the visualization system data only for birch. And if, if, you, uh, if you don't have any such a preference, um, you just click all and you will get all the trees. And then if you want to know uh, which tree which graph for what tree you are seeing, you will see it in the details of the graph. Of the graph here, you can see the Fagus sylvatica, so you see the Latin name of, of the species. And also you see the site name of that school, and very often it's called by the uh, three species as well, but it's usually in their own language. So, Let's just um, wrap it up. So in visualization tool, you can filter data according to three species. You can select a particular school, be it a your school or some other school and see what data they have and download the graph of their data or the spreadsheet, which means uh, it's like a table, like an Excel table. It's a similar format. You can download, print, or share the graph, or to do the same with the spreadsheet. And then if you want to analyze the data, for example, according to the date or according to the you know, colors, you can do it. But I think this analysis of the data is uh, uh, perhaps much useful for spring when you have the, not only the color, but you have also the uh, length of the leaf. And then you can see how it's growing. So, uh, okay, I will go um, one, I think one thing I wanted to say that uh, you can also find, I'm just looking on this if it's here or not. Uh, yes. Uh, if you are interested in uh, one more thing which we observe in the autumn, so one is color and the other one is the date of the last leaf, when the last leaf was lost. Because you observe always four trees, uh, sorry, four leaves of a tree. And when the last leaf of, the, of those four is lost, that's the date that you can also get from the system. And then you can compare, if you have the same trees, you can, for, for example, compare if the uh, last leaf was lost earlier in uh, your school or in uh, some school which is in, uh, for example, higher altitude or in different latitude, uh, so you can you can do different comparisons. So that was the other thing. Okay, and and one more thing. Um, these are the uh, here. This this uh, icon means the spreadsheet. Uh, this icon does not really work. Does not work for the green down protocols. So this is not really useful. And uh, yeah. So if you want to see how to do that step by step, then I recommend really to uh, 
watch the videos or download the presentations that the GLOW program prepared for you. So either you can, uh, you will have it under this link or uh, I will show you uh, how you can find it right in the visualization system. So I am uh, stopping this presentation now. Is it still okay? Can you hear me? Is the signal good? Okay. So I will share the um, Globe website. Yeah. So Globe website, this is the title, the homepage of the Globe website. As you can see here, I am signed in. Here is my name. So if you sign in, there will be your name here. And when you are signing, uh, fast way how to get to the visualization system, or even if you are not signing actually, is through this big button. So if I click on that, it will take me to the system. It just takes a little bit time to load. Yeah. Or, so that's one thing, or if I go back to here again, uh, here under this go to, you will have the name of your school. Uh, you can go to this uh, here, you will have the name of your school. And if you go to your school page, then you can, uh, you can uh, um, go directly to your site, which means you will directly see your data. So that's, that's the difference. Um, so I can show this as well. So this is there is an education center. It's like my school, let's say. And here you can see what I was talking about. So there we have the school data for most recent measurements. So if I now click on this, I have phenology site here. Again, it's the same page that is creating, just that it will directly move me in the map to my school. And you can see that there, is, there are no data because this site is just for purpose of webinars. So I don't have anything here, even for green down, I have just green up. Okay. So I will start fresh. Let's say that you come here and you don't, you don't see your data directly. So what you, you can do here? Here you can just uh, move the map any uh, direction you want. You can zoom in. It's like normal map uh, that you're used to uh, have on, on your phones or Google Maps or anything similar. And here are the tutorials. So if you click on these, uh, and now I don't do anything. I am not clicking anywhere. It just leads me uh, to the tutorial itself. So if you click on it, you will see the same as I am as as uh, is going on the screen now. So this is quickly how the visualization system works. I believe that uh, some of you you already used the system for some other protocols than the green up or green down. So yeah, that's it. That's the end. So here uh, I recommend really to see these uh, demonstrations. So this one was the 20 second. Here you have quick, which is a little bit longer than this 20 seconds. And uh, you can also download a full tutorial for, for this uh, visualization system. So I think that's really nice. Um, uh, nice to play with even the students can, you know, get to know how to work with that. And now if I want to see uh, these graphs that I was showing you, I do this. Um, I go to these, you know, sh like sheets, it means layers. And now I have to find the green down, green up or green up in the spring if you want. So obviously I need to go to biosphere because the trees will be in biosphere, right? And here I have different options. I can also see the tree heights that we, this year we also measure the tree height. Uh, I have green up and green down. So I'm choosing green down and you always need to confirm it, submit. And now you can see what I was already showing you this, the filter by, tr by the tree species. And here we see actually which locations on the map 
uh, have the data. So each location here uh, that you can see, each leaf belongs to a school and that school observes a tree. So that's basically how it works. And if I click on any of these, I will see that graph, the detail. So I randomly selected one uh, from Poland, which has two observations so far for, for this autumn. So the graph does not look that beautiful like uh, that example I showed you. But anyways, um, here you can see the species. And um, here you can see the um, for the date. No, I don't see it, but yeah, because I think it's it's still uh, the leaf is still on the tree, so they don't have. Uh, it's not written here yet. What is the what is the date of the last leaf lost? But I think once they mark it as the that the leaf was lost, uh, you will see it here. So like that, you can actually uh, see different trees different uh, data entry. Uh, you can see that I kind of lost this menu here, so I can always put it back like this. This, this arrow works like that. And here we have also legend. And um, for green up, green down, this uh, date, the, which you can also set up by the calendar, the date is not really that important. You always need to have the correct year because here the dates, um, uh, the dates are not like, um, the map is not changing day by day, right? It's changing only year by year. So if I, if I change to year, you will see slightly different map, I believe. Yeah, you see a little bit perhaps more observations already for last year. And you see a little bit different colors here as well. So that's actually the logic of the visualization for green down and for green up as well, that it's not showing uh, any value which is on that particular day, but it's showing the whole graph is uh, always shows for the whole season. So for the whole autumn, you see the colors of for the whole spring, you see the uh, how the leaf was growing. So it makes sense to display only one graph per uh, that season. And that season is actually um, determined by, by you if you choose green down or green up. So if you choose green down for a particular year, you will always see just the autumn data. And if you choose green up, you will always see the graphs with uh, the spring data. So that's that's how it works. Yep. So what else? What else we can see? Perhaps. Okay, I will see if we have. Okay, they they have also very little data, and I just want to show you that this is the link for sharing the graph. So if I share, if I click on it, uh, it will ask me where I want to share it. And this is the, so this was for social media and this is the link that you can copy and you can send by email to either to yourself or to students or to colleagues, or you can share it um, on the discussion forum of the campaign as well. Good. And here you can see this uh, plus uh, sign. So this is the enlarging uh, option. So now we didn't really get all this uh, as we could see for the Ukrainian school, but if you would like to do it, you, uh, you click on this. And here again, you have a link or you have a uh, icon for print printouts, so it will make a PDF for you, or you can make just a print screen and you'll get the same. 
Okay, so. And now um, let's pause for now. And do you have any questions to this part? Lenka, is there anything in the chat? Or if anyone no. wants to speak, you can also speak. Any question? Please. Also, as Bara mentioned, don't uh, worry, write us in, in Czech or Slovak. If you please, we can translate. Yeah also from spoken comments or from chat. So if you, you can still generate some questions, but uh, so I would like you to, if you can just write to the chat who already, who was already working with this visualization system. Either if you work with that for the green up or green down data or for any other data, can you just type there like I did or I never used it so that we, we can we can see that. Okay, Joanna says she did. Okay. Okay. Lucia. Okay, Ivica also good. So was was when you when you work with that, was it was it working properly? Did you like did you um did you like how it works in general or did, did you uh, did you experience any troubles like it was not you you could not find something or the filters did not work for you was there anything that you remember was perhaps not really that nice Okay, so there is some um, comment in the chat that the students were excited that there were no troubles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Yipka says that it needs some practice. That's that's true. But uh, I think once you just play with that, uh, you you will learn how to do that. Yeah. So I I sometimes have the same trouble that I cannot remember where I found uh, the thing last time and I have to spend like five, 10, 15 minutes looking for it myself. So don't worry, it's normal. Even I, I think I work with the system more than you, but still sometimes I, I simply forget where is what or how it works. Yes, and it's constantly I mean, it has been changing in past and now I think it works quite nice even for the green down and green up because we tested some new features and uh, actually the technology working group, uh, they made some changes last year so that now we have uh, perhaps better uh, graphs, more, which are more, uh, you can understand them better perhaps. If I can... Uh, Yes, like but I can I give one comment uh, because sometimes there is a little bit of confusion of when or how you can actually um, like approach or use the visualization system. And mm -hmm. you have already mentioned it that uh, you can be signed in having a globe account, but you don't have to be signed in and have a globe account. So I, I just want to point it out because sometimes I have a questions like if uh, you have to be a member of a, a phenology campaign a forum or phenology campaign community. So this is not not um, mandatory. This is not related to the visualization system. As Bara already said, uh, the visualization system, you can just enter it from the GLOBE website even without signing in or even without signing to the uh, phenology campaign community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. And actually, if you... Uh, if you want students to work with that, right, you can either um, guide them to so that they go to the home page of GLOBE and then they can click on this big button uh, visualize data and it will open for them. Or you can directly actually send them the link to the visualization system. So as I was sharing it, okay, I, was, I will share it once again. Mm.
So when I am at the at the home page, okay, it's now somehow slow now. And here, this is the big uh, button, which I think everyone can find. And if I click on that, you see here is the address. So if you just copy this address and you give it to students, they will get there directly, even without, you know, having uh, uh, searching for, for this button. So you can, you can actually copy this one. And then just do this step. I will repeat it once again, biosphere and here green up or green down, green down and submit. Okay. And there was also a question uh, that someone wants to compare data from different schools. So in, in uh, green up and green down, the only thing that you can do if you want to compare the data is to see, um, to see the details of, of these schools um, and to see if you know already which school you want to uh, which school has the data and you want to compare it then uh, if you know the location of the school you can easily find it in the map so for example if i want to compare my data to school in malta then i will zoom to malta and i will see uh, i'm already there and i will see that there are some data here there are some schools so I will click on it and I will see if they have actually, yeah, they have some data. Uh, it's a Goza College Middle School and see they have quite nice colors here. So what I can do now, uh, I can just um, open it like this and, and show it to students or I can enlarge it, right? I can print it out, uh, I can uh, put it to my presentation and all that. And here you can also see the dates. So if you want to compare, for example, where the if, if you observe the fig tree, because they observe fig tree, you can see it here, ficus. And for example, here you can see that there was kind of a turning point that from the green, green shades, it turned yellow. It's just like three days back. So if you also observe fig tree and you have data for your fig tree, then you can see if perhaps your tree also had this, uh, you know, turning point from green to yellow around these dates, or perhaps it was already two weeks back, or perhaps it's still green and it will come later on. So this is the way how you can compare the data that you, uh, you actually know from which, at least from which country you want to compare it. Or if you don't know, like, to whom you should compare it, because perhaps you don't know what schools are having what trees, then you use the filter. This I recommend. So instead of this all, uh, for example, I will choose the birch. And then you need to take, uh, click on this update so that the map rewrites. And see, now we have less number. We have smaller number of those sites that have birch, right? Can you, I will do it once again, see all, update. You can see more of them. And if I select just one tree, I will get less of them, which means that only the birch tree is visible now. And then I will just see if, uh, what number of data they will have. So uh, I went to Ukraine, to Kyiv, and I can see that they observe what they observe, Betula Pendula, right? It's the birch tree. And actually here, uh, this is just to make sure that uh, I really have the birch tree, but I should be having it because I selected it in the filter, right? And uh, so this is how, how you can compare that. And some schools, if you want to go quickly from green down to green up, some schools, if they do green up, you can go there quickly like this. So now I am in spring. Okay, so you can you can even in this detail of the school, you can um, switch between these. Uh, data counts. Uh, I haven't talked about that. Data counts means uh, 
if the school actually did the measurements that year. So here you will see the data counts for different uh, years and how many measurements they had. So if you want to get, uh, I, I will try to see actually if we can get it for more schools. If you want to get schools that have uh, many measurements, not only, for example, one measurement, then you can, um, I hope it will work now. I'm not sure myself, but let's try it. So I, what I did was that I changed to data counts and the system is working now. You can see it here. That we have to wait for that for a second. Or perhaps I will, yeah, I think it's, it got stuck now. Okay, it's still working. Yeah, now we can see that. So data counts, it means that you will not see the measurements itself, the colors of the leaves or the length of the leaf. You will not see that. You will just see how many, how often the school actually uh, measure the data. So here I selected or it got selected from 2015 to 2020. So what schools had the most data uh, for last uh, five years. And here, if you look at the legend, it's like, obviously the bigger uh, is the circle, more data they have collected. So according to that, you see that there are schools which like this one, for example, which has uh, only like, let's say five to 10 measurements. And then there are some schools like this one or this one that have more than 40 measurements. Right, so if you, and this is for all of them, I think the filter is not active now, I will just check it. Yeah, here you have all, uh, these data are for all the trees. You cannot really select here the tree species. So according to that, you can, again, see the data, uh, the detail. But here in this detail, again, you see the numbers of measurements, okay? This is not a length of the leaf or the date of the leaf lost, but it's the number of measurements. So you can see that this school uh, had in 2017, they did around like 30 measurements. Uh, next year, which was 2018, they did actually over 60, it will be more than 60 here again, 40 something. And you can see that it's for different um, months. This is for five year and I will try to make it and it's monthly. So I will try to change it here. Just for year 2017, I'll try if it works. Yeah, so for 2017, you can see that they were not really having any data in the spring. You see the months here, but you have they started in July and the autumn they have some data. So you can see every month how many data they have. Okay, so this shows that this school is quite active and they will have some nice data that you can download. And if you want to see them, then here you can click on measurements and you will see it, but it will by default, it will take you to this year. And uh, if you want to see, sometimes uh, they have like more trees, right? So this you can check here. Did you see that it's three from nine? So most likely they have somehow nine trees that they observe. Perhaps not uh, all of them they observe every year, but you can actually browse to see there is no data for this tree for this year. So yeah. So these were some trees that they observed earlier. And about, again, about each tree, when I'm switching, it's still one school, but they have different trees. And here you can see how the, how the um, species are changing. So this is Quercus, the oak tree. If I go to number three, it will be Turnus, which is the cherry tree and so on. So once you find a school with uh, quite a lot of data, which again, you will do through these data counts, uh, then you can go to further detail because obviously it makes sense to compare schools that have 
more data, not only, for example, one record for season. So that that would be my answer to the question: How or we can compare data from different schools? That was just an idea. So do we have any other questions now about the visualization system? Stop sharing it. We don't have any more questions in the chat. Uh, we just had have, have one comment uh, that uh, there were some troubles. Uh, yeah. yeah uh, previously, uh, but it will be solved based on the information from the webinar. So just, mm. just a quick comment that I would like to encourage you. If you have some troubles, don't hesitate to write us. You can you always have uh, my email uh, on the Phenology campaign website. So if you come to some troubles with visualization or anything else with the data, please let us know. We will be happy to to uh, give you answer mm -hmm. or help you or meet with you online to help you to solve it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I will continue. Uh, okay, I stopped here. So what I will do is I will try to, I just want to say a few comments to the data entry because perhaps there are some people who are also new. Uh, so in data entry, always data entry works different than the visualization system. For data entry, you need to be logged in to the um, blog website you can see here that I'm sign in and uh, then either you can do this again go to and you will see data entry right there as an option or you can always navigate yourself through this many globe data entry and here the first one is data entry and here you have different options and what I'm showing now is the training data entry uh, training data entry is for everybody who wants to uh, who wants to practice. So training data entry means that whatever data you enter to the system, it will not go to the database. It will just be stored somewhere for I don't know one month, I think, and then it will get deleted. So training data entry is for those who wants to practice. If you want to practice yourself. Or if you want to practice with your students, you can always uh, use this training data entry site. It looks exactly the same as the normal one, just that the only difference is that whatever mistake you make there, it will never show up anywhere. Nobody will see it. So you can actually make mistakes there freely. Okay, so data entry, training data entry. Here you have the path. So that's one option. And then if you already want to really submit the data, you want to see them in the visualization system, you want everybody to see them actually, then you go to the, I call it real data entry. It's like a live data entry. And there, uh, for that, you use this option with this go to enter data. So if you do this enter data from here, which is next to your name, you will go to the real data entry. Okay, if you go, if you want to go to the training one, once again, you go through this many. And it looks both the same. It looks like this. It looks quite boring. Uh, you see the name of your school and you see your site. And new data you send by this new observation. If you want to see your observations from the past, you will, uh, you will go to this past observation. But uh, this is not uh, visualization okay this will not take you to the map that i have just showed you this will just take you to the system where you can correct the data or delete the data so that's why you have this past observations here so sometimes people get confused they think that by clicking on this it will take them to the map no uh, it will just take you to the your own like records that you can correct so from here, you will not get to the uh, data entry in any way, because here you have uh, you are in a different system. You are actually in the system where you can edit the data. 
when you are in the map in the visualization system this is just for uh, there you cannot change any data there you can just download or see compare but you are not changing any records here you actually change the records okay so that's that's um, what i wanted to say uh, or to highlight uh, and as I said, I will not go through the data entry now. And I will just looking to the chat now. Okay, I will start from the question from Mitka. So she asked if in the training site, uh, if, if uh, she needs to add new site or if she can use uh, the, the, the sites that are there. So if you have any site there, you can use your own sites, which are already there, obviously. If the tree is at that site, for example, you have a, uh, let's say you have a garden next to your place. And in that garden, you previously, you did some atmospheric measurements. And you have also a tree there, which is quite close to your, to the place where you did uh, the atmospheric measurements. So you can, you can use the same site. You just need to a little bit edit the site and you need to click there that it's also for this greenings, this green, green up, green down. And you need to write there, which is the three species that you have there. And yeah, it's basically that, that you need to identify the tree a little bit so that everybody knows if it is birch or oak or anything else. But if you already have a site, you just need to like add one more, um, let's say, characteristics to that site, which means the site will be also for green up or green down. And um, and if it's easier for you, you can create a new site. I, I can uh, um, I'll just go back to the presentation and because it was on the slide, so. I will show that. Okay. Mm. So here, um, I have different sites here. You can see one for phenology, one is here for hydrology. But I can easily take any of these and I can make it uh, the phenology site as well. And this I will do through this edit site. If I go to edit site, then I will be able to add uh, different characteristics to the site. I will just have a look if I have it here on the slides. Uh, yeah, so here is add site. So this you will use if you, uh, if you don't have any site yet, if you are starting completely. But it will actually, if you do this edit site, it will actually take you to the same type of uh, display. You will, with the only difference that you will see already the name of your site here, and you will already have the location and everything. So you will be, what you will be doing is this. You find Biosphere, and you will just check this greening, which means green up and green down, and you will add uh, which plant, which three species you have, Telia, Codata. And you will label that tree. You will, for example, uh, name it the tree in our garden number five. And then you will, here is create site. And there, I think it will be some similar button, perhaps update site or something like that. That's the only thing that you need to do. Yeah. So that's. That's my answer to question of Yitka. And there was one more. Yeah, I have to check. There is one question regarding the globe observer. Yes, yes. And, one, one, more question, and one question regarding the data entry. So I don't know if the globe observer you are coming through mm -hmm. with me. Ramona, can you perhaps describe it? What, what does it mean that they have, uh, they cannot take photos? Can, can you talk about it? What does yes. that mean? Hi, um, so when they do the observations and they want to take the photos of clouds or for even the trees, it says that they cannot take photos because um, of the compass. 
the, the oh. compass, it doesn't appear. Is it because of their device? Maybe they don't have the magnetic direction? Yes. I don't know. Yeah, this um, but then mm -hmm. their device is uh, more recent than mine, sort of. I, I really don't mm. know how uh, this could happen. Mm. No, I, I can see two options. So one, one is what you described, which is like that, uh, this kind of magnetic, I don't know how to call it. Yes, yes. Whatever it is in the phone does, does not, uh, either it's not inbuilt, right? Or it does not work properly. And I know that people from different countries, they had troubles with that because mm -hmm. uh, they had phones. And I think it does not really matter if the phone is old or new, but okay. somehow it depends on the type. I okay. know actually that people from some different countries, they had trouble with that, that nobody actually from that country who bought phone in that country had, uh, con you know, could access the photos in Globe Observer. I remember she, that. Uh, some yeah. of the students, they did the observation, but of course they could not upload the photos. Yeah, yeah. So I think it, it's it's somehow connected to the type of the phone. So that can be one thing. And the okay. other thing, which is more simple, but I'm sure you already checked that with the students, that uh, you need to allow the app to access your camera. Yes, they, they already did that. I think. Okay, okay. It's something related to, to the mm. magnetic orientation, I think. Yes, um, yes. They need either if they want to take photos, they have to take them manual, not using the feature mm. where it marks the north, east, etc. But of course, they need a compass to know exactly the direction because, yes. as it is, it's easy. You, you just put the, the circuit on the direction. Um, okay, then. I thought yeah. it might be something from the app, but I think it's more because of the device then. Yes, yes. I, I remember that, that uh, people from more countries were complaining about this. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so we have... Sh sh shall I... Yes, you can... Offer it? Yes. Uh, we have another question from Slovakia, from Adriana who tried to create a new site in the data entry. Ah, okay, and, uh, I can see that. It didn't work because of uh, invalid latitude, longitude coordinates. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think that's some, that's some bug. I think it's not, Adriana, it's not your fault. It's uh, something in the globe system that they did not still update it that Slovakia is a globe country. I think that's, uh, we have to uh, report this to the help desk that they have to uh, check that in, in, because it's happening uh, repeatedly that they, they kind of, you know, changed it in some uh, part of the system of the database or website that Slovakia mm -hmm. is a new globe country, but in some others they did not uh, for that's some that's reason. That's so I, we have to tell them that uh, when uh, when you are entering the uh, coordinates for Slovakia, it says mm -hmm. that... Uh, is, it, is this message there that it's invalid? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I think that's definitely connected to that, that it does not... It, in normal data entry is okay. Okay, so it's in but training. It's training, training uh -huh. mode. Okay. Perfect, yeah. So I will, I will write to help desk and then mm -hmm. they, they have okay. to change this. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Bara, what? maybe maybe I will add that when we established two new sites, not in the training, it was working. So it should be okay for the establishment of new sites. And maybe it's only problem with the training, as you said already. Yes. Good. Yeah, good to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So see, we have, we can solve so many problems. Uh -huh. uh, we have it, some more. <laughs> if it's, uh, yeah, I can see that. Why the data entered from the application cannot be seen on the data entry? I noticed that with the cloud application. You mean that it's not, uh, you cannot see it uh, where? In, in your data entry records or in the visualization system? If, it's, uh, if you can, if you can uh, react to that. In, in your data entry, in, in that what I was showing in your data entry records. 
Okay. Uh, and the globe application that you used, that was uh, the globe observer, which is that application where you have these different modules, you have the mosquitoes there and land cover and all that. So was that this application or was it the other one, the data entry app? The globe observer, okay. So I think with what can be the case, but I'm not sure, perhaps you do everything correctly and it's uh, it's some other trouble that there is. But sometimes it happens that when you actually downloaded the app for the first time, right, you registered with some email and then you have also some email on which you are registered in the globe gov site which is your globe account and if these two emails are different then it's uh, sending the data under different id which means the data never get connected to uh, your globe account and to your school for example so this can be the case and um I don't know actually if you can find out which which was the which is the registration email uh, through which you registered in the Globe Observer. If you can find out and then see what is your Globe account and if it's the same, then it should work. Then it should be connected. But um, yeah, that this is the most common thing that sometimes people have. For example, they use their school email like teacher's email for signing into GlobeGov. So they have teacher's account and they sign in to GlobeGov like this and they do data entry to the website, uh, signing like this. And then they are downloading the Globe Observer and they use their private email, for example. If I download new application, I verify it uh, through my phone and in my phone, I have different email. If I have iPhone, my email is there already and it's my private email, not my, my work email. And then actually the app gets connected to this email. Or if I am uh, downloading the app, I have to actually um, select that I want some other email there than the, my default email. So I think that can be the case actually. Otherwise the data uh, which you collect through Globe Observer, if it's connected to your email and to your, which means it's connected to your school and to the sites that you have, it should be there. And the, the other thing is that, um, how to describe it? In Globe Observer, uh, you have, if, if you log in as a Globe teacher with your account, then you would be able to see all your data sites, right? Which means that uh, the data will go directly to, they will be under your school, under your data sites. But sometimes, um, uh, if you log in with different email, it just gets to the database as a citizen scientist data. And there is nobody can actually see that it's linked to that you are a teacher and that you are a globe teacher and that this is a globe school site. So that's. Yeah. If you can, if you can check it, the, the email. Yeah. And if it does not work still. You can write write the email to us, and we can try to, you know, test it or to find the data if, if they are somewhere inside the database but lost somewhere. This can also happen sometimes. Yeah. Okay. There is confirmation that it doesn't uh, for the Slovakia uh, training data entry. Okay. Thank you. And we will report that. Yeah. Good. So so many questions. So uh, if, if you still have some questions, please do ask. And I, I want to show you one more thing which I got from the technology working group. And that's just the overview of the changes uh, which will be in place since let's say the new year, I think. Um, Okay, it did not work, so I will go back. Yeah, it is here. So, 
when I talk to David Overoy, who is the uh, main, uh, let's say, technology person and who, who represents the team, the technology team who uh, updates the website and all the technology behind that, and also the Globe Observer and all that, uh, he told me that uh, I should talk briefly about this during the webinar. And at the same time, if you want to hear more about this, how it will work, uh, I really uh, recommend you to uh, join the uh, regional meeting, the, the online regional meeting for Europe and Eurasia that we have the last week of October. And um, there, there will be session uh, which will be led directly by David Overroy and he will be talking about all this and he can answer all the questions. Um, I am not really that knowledgeable now to perhaps answer all your questions, but at least I want to show you the basic. Uh, you can see that from the new year it should be ready. And what, what is on the list? Uh, so the basic thing, the, which is I think the great thing, is that these two apps, Globe Observer app, which is uh, this uh, app which is uh, better looking with the, all these modules and nice uh, pictures there and the globe data entry app which is the little bit more boring app they will get into one app they will get together so i think this will save lots of conf uh, confusion between teachers and students like which app i should use so all will be one app and it will be the app for globe and it will be just one so this i think is a perfect thing that after a couple of years uh this will be joined together uh then there will be the protocol bundles if you haven't heard about it yet uh bundles means that uh protocols from different globe areas that has that have some topics in common let's say uh, water uh, they will get uh, into one bundle. So now you can already find these bundles on the website. For example, there is, uh, I think, urban bundle. So all the protocols that are important to um, observe urban environment, for example. Uh, then the next thing is some simplification in site creation and in data entry. And I will show you that in a while. And then also the look will uh, kind of simplify in the way that the mobile and desktop and different versions of, of, the, of the systems of the mobile phones will uh, look more alike. So this is how it will work with Globe Observer. And as you can see, um, the app will just look uh, as, as one, the same for trained or certified GLOBE users. So basically for GLOBE teachers or anyone who is trained in, in GLOBE. And uh, the data entry can be done through this app for everybody who is trained. And uh, different view will be, will be for GLOBE observers, which means for the people who want to do just some observations, and they, they are not necessarily from the schools and they are not really like properly trained. So there will be like different, um, let's say, um, how do you call it, interfaces for, according to the user. And uh, now how uh, I said that um, there will be some changes with the sites and data entry and uh, so what David was emphasizing was that uh, nothing actually changes with your sites. They are they will be all in the system. Nothing is like deleted or, or you don't have to create anything again. Everything which all the sites which you had, they will be there. The thing is that um, if you are creating a site, uh, now you first have to create the site and then you can click on data entry, right? Because if you don't have any site, you cannot enter data. So, uh, which sometimes was not that uh, user friendly to, to do this through the phone. So what they um, kind of simplify that, that uh, 
you first um, choose the protocol or let's say the measurement you want to do. And then either the phone will show you that uh, you have already sites for this kind of protocol. Let's say for green down, you already have the sites where you have trees and you will just choose which one you want to use if you have more than one. Or if you don't have any, it will just take you uh, to the module where you can start that site. So it's like more intuitive that it will lead you through the process. So that's, I think, the basic change that uh, it will be like more intuitive and it will not, you will not have to, you know, go first to your site and to check uh, if you already have a site where you can uh, submit this data because it will immediately, the system will immediate, immediately tell you, okay, you already have three sites for hydrology, for example, or for air temperature and you will just choose uh, which one you want. Or if you want a new one, you can always create a new one. So that's uh, how it will work. So if, if um, since next year you will see something different in the app or even in the desktop, the normal data entry to, uh, to your computer, please don't panic. It's, uh, it's something which has been introduced and which uh, should simplify the things, not make it more complicated. So that's, that's all for these changes. And because we were talking about the Globe Observer a lot, I want just to point out, I'm not sure how many you are using Globe Observer now, but if you are not, here is the uh, link to the Globe Observer page. And for in Globe Observer page, you have tutorials and videos and some you know examples of research projects for each and every module of Low Observer. So I selected the module of trees uh, where you can uh, do the height of the tree. Uh, so this is the address for the trees. Otherwise here you can uh, select any other one. If you, if you want clouds, you can get clouds tutorials here as well. You can download the app from here as well. So this is just a shortcut. Um, do we have any other questions? I don't see any, but if you if you have some, you please feel free to type it in the, in the meanwhile. And uh, I will just shortly show how these tutorials for Globe Observer look like. So either they are videos there, where you see step by step how, how to uh, do the measurement. Or if you download the PDF, so this is the PDF, you will get these uh, directly the screenshots. So this is the module of trees. When you open the app, you can see that is the shape of the phone. So you will see it exactly like this. And here again, and here already you are signed in. And it matters if you are signed in as a Globe teacher by your uh, teacher's account, or if you are signed in uh, as a you know, private person is a citizen scientist by your private account email. Here you have new trees observation, which means if you are going to measure, do the new observation, and here you have, uh, if you want to review or actually uh, submit the observations. And here it looks like this. It just leads you through the whole process. It helps you. It's quite understandable even for students the text is not that long and you have always the pictures there. Uh, so I'm just um, showing how it looks like. You can then download it and go through it yourself. And the last will be congratulations. So once again, okay, I'll, I'll show it directly on the website. So we are at the Globe Observer website now. Here you have some examples of student research as well. 
Here you have some people who are behind this each module. And I think in this taking observations, you have the tutorials and these guides. So the video is here. Here you, you actually have it all there here as well. And some frequently asked questions. Yeah. And if you click on tutorials, which are, it's the same page, you just need to scroll down. And here, this is the PDF that I was showing you. And here you can even download the movie. Or you can just uh, start the movie right here. And as I said, here you have the different uh, modules, clouds, mosquitoes, land cover, trees, and so on. So I think that's, that's all from me. And uh, questions most welcome still. We have, if you are not in a hurry, we can still answer a couple of questions. Before we have some uh, questions written in the chat, I have uh, one more comment about apps used in the uh, phenology. That uh, we also use um, an application that takes uh, pictures and creates them into the time lapse videos. It's called Grow App. Uh, I think most of you have uh, heard about it or uh, perhaps even used it. So just want to emphasize that these are two different applications. It's also sometimes uh, um, a bit of confusion that, that uh, there is a globe observer and there is a glow app, grow app. And unfortunately, these two apps are not connected together. It's not, not yet, <laughs> maybe in the future, but not now. So uh, if you take pictures uh, with a globe observer or do the three high measurements with a globe observer, you don't it's it's not uh, anyhow related to to the grow up grow up just simply takes uh, pictures creates them into this time lapse movie and you can afterwards see your pictures or your movies in the uh, uh, grow up today website which you can actually you can find more information on the uh, phenology campaign website as well mm -hmm. okay. yeah so the grow up is just another application freely available for anyone that we recommend to teachers and students to use, but uh, it has nothing to do with Globe. It's just nice app that allows to do these animations. So that's why uh, we think it's nice to use it. And we know that actually students and teachers, they like it to so that they can make their own animation of how, how the tree is greening up in spring or how it changes the colors and then they can see this animation on the map or uh, have it in the phone and, and yeah show it to, to other teachers or friends so but it does not really collect any any data good so i'm i'm done for today and I don't know if someone wants to <laughs> say something or ask some more question or give some comments to um, what we covered today. So I'm going back to um, to the aims of our webinar. So what we covered was the visualization system. Um, yeah, but I'm not sharing it. <laughs> so once again, yeah, so what we did was uh, we spent quite some time in a visualization system. Um, I wrapped up a little bit what uh, what changes changes are in data entry uh, and especially in the apps. Um, 
Then we answer a couple of questions. Thank you for these questions. And um, perhaps we solved some of the troubles and some we did not solve, but we have to ask someone else to do that. So that's uh, also good that uh, you told us and we can then ask the help desk office to and the technology team to change some settings, especially that one for Slovakia for this training data entry. And um, one more thing which I didn't say, but I'm sure that you know about it. If for some reason you are not allowed to enter the data, the real data, I mean, and it shows you that you are not a trained teacher. Uh, it's because uh, there are no records about the about yourself being trained in the green up or green down. So this can obviously happen. Uh, perhaps you haven't attended any training or you attended and the person who organized that training did not really mark it properly. So it does not show in, in the system. This can also happen. So what you can do is uh, in case that you did some training and you know how to do green up and green down, uh, you should contact your country coordinator and ask to uh, ask him or her to change your training records in your group account so that you can actually uh, upload the data. Or if you haven't been uh, to any training, official, official one, like any workshop in past, then what you can do uh, you can do the e-training on the GLOBE website, uh, the e-training modules for green up or green down. And uh, this is like, uh, how to call it, like a self-service. Uh, I will just point you to that page. Where you can see that. So if you are at the GLOBE website, you have this get trained here. And here, first you have in-person workshops, which means the normal workshops. And here you have the protocol, the e-training. So protocols are the uh, measurements that we do. And the e-training is the place that we want to visit if you want to do the e-training. So here you have some short uh, summary of uh, who can do e-training, what you need for that. Basically, you need to be signed in here, right? I'm not signed in now because the system logs, logged me out automatically after like 20 minutes. And um, here you can choose what training you want to do. So green up and green down are, are under bios here. There will be many more, so you need to uh, look for it. See, the list is quite long. So you need to find your um, green up, green down, it's here. The first one, be careful, the first one is for grasses and the second one is the tree and shrub. So this is for what we do in phenology campaign. In some other countries, they also do the grass. But in our region, we don't really do the grass because we have trees and um, we focus on trees. And here the same for green up, green down. One is for grass and one is for tree. And you can download the e-learning module. It's a presentation that you go through. And once uh, you are done with that, you can do the assessment test. Now it's not active, you can see that. And it's not active because I'm not signed in. I sign in, it will be active and I can do the test. So yeah, that's it. That's it. That's really uh, everything from me now. So thank you <laughs> and good luck with your uh, observations and with the data entry. And uh, if you have any troubles really uh, either you can contact us directly, the office, or you text to Lenka, or you can even ask through the discussion forum of the campaign.